Hello, in this video we will review the Stacker window. The Stacker window is our special keyframe manager. It is inspired by the traditional 2D animation exposure sheet. It works in a complementary way with the time bar. Stacker is the name for this window and it is also the name that we use for the animation layers here in the mixer. The Stacker menu displays the keyframes of the current selected stacker in the mixer. So here, if we are on our root stacker in the mixer, then the stacker menu displays only two keyframes. If we go back into our all stacker, then the keyframes for that stacker are displaying in the stacker menu. Keyframes are displayed vertically here in the stacker menu and are labeled. You can navigate through your keyframes using your left and right arrow keys. On the left side, you've got the timing position of where your key is. And on the right side, you've got the timing between the keyframes. So here, our second keyframe is on the fifth frame. You can see it here. And between the second and the third keyframes, we have seven frames, which is displayed here. Both of these sides can be edited here through the stacker. So if I wanted my second keyframe to begin at the 10th frame, then I can change it here. Or if I wanted the frames in between the first and second stack, uh, keyframe, to be 20 frames, then I could change it through this side. You can also drag and drop keys to change their order. And if you hold down control while dragging them, then it duplicates the key. You can right mouse button click on any key to add flags, allowing you to better distinguish your key. So you can mark it as an extreme key or a breakdown key. And this is just a visual feedback. It doesn't change your key behavior. By default, the display time unit is in millisecond. Uh, currently, I have mine displaying in frames. You can change that quickly by going into your time bar preferences and changing the time unit here. Now, the special thing about the stacker is that keyframes and timings are linked. If you create a keyframe, then it adds time to your whole animation. And if you remove a keyframe, then it removes time. If you want to create a key without affecting or shifting other keys, you have to use your time bar. You can put your cursor anywhere you want in the time bar and then right mouse button click and create a key. You can also click or hit K on your keyboard. Using the stacker in combination with your time bar, we have the best of two worlds. You no longer need to spend time panning in your time bar in order to get to the key that you want to reach. You can go into your stacker and quickly select even keys that are outside of your viewport in your time bar. And you can very quickly change the timing of those keys. So it is still edit editable in your stacker, even if it is out of frame in your time bar. Now let's discover the stacker buttons here at the top. Here you have the create a key button, which when you click on this, when you have selected a key, then it duplicates that key and puts it directly underneath. And it also shifts the timing of your animation. The time bar process is that if you put your cursor between two keys, it will create an in-between key with interpolated posing and it'll, the keys after that created key will not be adjusted or shifted, but they will be renumbered. 
To delete a key, you click on the second button and it removes the selected keys and their respective timing. So it removes time from your animation. Keep in mind that the remove key available with right mouse button clicking in the time bar does not change the timing of your time, your time bar of your animation. Now up here we also have the previous ghost and the next ghost. And so this is uh, ghosting for your animations. And if you click on your preferences for your stacker, then you can change whether it displays ghosting for keys or ghosting for frames. You can also put ghost always wire or ghost on playing. Now here we have the loop mode button. So if we go into this other animation, you can see that the very last frame is our loop frame. So if I remove the loop and I play my animation, you can see that the animation jumps. Clicking on this button inserts an automatic loop key to cycle the animation. The loop key is positioned at the very end of the animation and cannot be edited as it always mimics the very first key. So if you want to change the very last loop key, then you would have to modify your first key. So you can see here that if I try to change this key in my curve board, I cannot. But if I move the very first key, then that is also influenced. Now up here, this button selects all of the keys in my stacker. This top button selects only the first top keys and this bottom button selects only the half bottom of my stacker keys. And so this is good for when you are working on a looped cycle animation. Now here you have the total timing amounts. So this shows the total time of um, amount of time of the selected keyframes. So if you select all your keyframes then you can see I have 56 frames. The top half is 24 and the bottom half is 32. You can edit this of course by just inputting whatever number you would like. So you can make it shorter or longer. It is very quick and easy to stretch your timing just by entering the value into the stacker instead of using the curve editor, which is not meant to change the timing of your animation. The stacker is really designed to handle the keyframes and timing in Akitsu.